cool. <coughs> All right, yeah, so I have up here the same page we were actually uh, just taking a look at. And so I'm going to be focusing on the uh, Map JavaScript API for most of the presentation. Also, I do want to touch on the Images API really quick. And so this is a pretty simple API, so I'll just uh, hit it. So we were actually using this on mug.org for a while. And it's very cool in that you basically you just put an image tag in your HTML and then put a source to something on Google servers, and Google will dynamically generate an image. It's the map that you specify. So, for example, uh, we have uh, this guy right here. So, if I go to the end, we have this uh, beastly URL that we uh, saw that's similar to what uh, Jim was doing. You see, we just uh, specify uh, the zoom level. So, that's like how zoomed in the map is, and then the latitude and longitude. Mm -hmm. So, what we were doing on mug.org is we had the latitude and longitude of uh, uh, the library. Uh, we had a zoom level, and then you can also specify like dynamic markers. And so if I were to say zoom uh, out a little bit to decrease the zoom, you can see that we're looking at... So that's just a really quick way if you have a quick website you want to go through and add a little map to it. Uh, but this is just a static image, so there's not much uh, going on here. So where did you get the latitude and longitude? Did you do that? You built that URL yourself? You just oh yeah, I built that. it myself. So right. if you were to go to like uh, map.google.com, there might be a better way to do this, but this is what I do. So we do something like... Uh, you, you might even be able to do it on your uh, smartphone by getting an application with the GPS yeah, where I'm on the camera. camera. Yeah. Well, you can write what can <coughs> Yeah, so at this point you can see like uh, we have this. Oh, can you get the that long here? Uh, if you have that lap turned on. Like yeah, there's a lap lap marker. Like a, like a Google Labs. Yeah, so what you can also do, at least what I do, is uh, yeah. hit here. Yeah. You just there right you click go. and say center on this location and then get the lap yeah. turn on. Oh, maybe I do have a move. <laughs> <laughs> but it's hard to copy and paste from a toolkit. What, 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 what do you have to do with the URL to get toolbars? Larger, okay. smaller? I think he's about to show us that. Oh, oh to, get, to get like the zooming in? Yeah, we're actually going to go do that. So that's where you go to the JavaScript API. And so I'm actually going to do a little bit of live coding here. So we'll see how that works. But uh, mm. you can, I'm going to touch on a little bit of it, just like sort of the basic stuff that you might want to do for a website. But you can go crazy with the number of things you can do. Like, uh, you can uh, incorporate Street View, which is like that panorama view. Yeah. Uh, there's all sorts of like a drawing library, the weather library. You have access to like uh, the biking directions and all that fun stuff. Uh, but what I'm going to do for this, uh, let's see. Okay, so I have this uh, very simple uh, document. Really, there's uh, nothing here. I'm just uh, including the Google Maps API in, in a script tag. So this is just uh, loading some JavaScript <coughs> on the page. You can see I have a div right here that I've called uh, map. I'm just making it a square and it's gray. So I'm not actually doing any sort of Google Maps stuff there. But even just by loading it onto the page, if I uh, pull up the JavaScript console, you can see I have uh, something called Google on my page already. And that has a... Uh, and that has a Google.maps API. And so this is the object we're going to be interacting with, this Google.maps API. <coughs> so the first thing we're going to do is just uh, get a map displaying on this page in place of the gray block. So I'm going to do, uh, oops, I have to actually put that in the script tag. Okay, so I'm just going to do some uh, basic JavaScript here. I'm just going to say on page load, call a function that I'll define called init map. And then uh, just provide a uh, false as a third parameter uh, that has to do with a uh, JavaScript event program. But that doesn't oh. Okay, and so now I'm going to define my function called a knit map. First thing I'm going to do is get a reference to this element right here because I want to put the map there. Okay, and then I'm also going to uh, pass in some options, which I'll define later. And then uh, where the magic really happens is we just say uh, our map is, we're going to interact with this uh, google.maps object. We want to make a map. Uh, we're going to target the map element that we defined and pass in some options. And so right now, if we were to refresh this page, 
I don't think it's actually going to do anything. Yeah, so it's not going to do anything because we haven't defined, uh, like, say, where we want the map to <coughs> like be centered, what latitude, longitude coordinates we want. So I'll go ahead and say we want the center, and just all this information about these uh, parameters are in the Google Maps documentation. So we'll say center, we're going to pass in a latitude and longitude as a pair, it's called the lat LNG object. And uh, let's see, what just happened to mm -hmm. have here, the latitude and longitude is roughly 43, negative 83 for uh, Detroit. Uh, we're gonna pass in a zoom level of uh, eight. The zoom levels go from uh, one to I think 17 maybe, with 17 being the most zoomed in, one being like the world view. And so eight will give us like a roughly uh, Michigan mm -hmm. zoom in a little bit. And uh, then we have to specify the map type. And so I'm gonna say map type ID Google.maps uh, map type ID roadmap, which is the map we've been looking at before, just uh, the roads. You also have like a terrain map. I think you have a satellite uh, option mm -hmm. as well if you want to go with that. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a also a hybrid, which is uh, the satellite with the roads on top of it. Okay, so now if I refresh, if I've done everything correctly, hey, oh, look at that. Uh, so it's just like that we have uh, Michigan. <laughs> so here, it's a full thing. I mean, if we really wanted to, we could go and uh, do the Google Street View. Yeah, 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 you did. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, you have uh, full zoom controls. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we have the map options here. We specify satellite. Okay, so at this point it's kind of cool, but it's not really doing too much, right? Where do you specify the size of the map? That's actually in a CSS right here. Oh, okay. So I had that big uh, gray box here. Saying oh, so I mean it's 500 by 500. So there was there was a limit in the thing we were looking at before of six something by six something for non business. Free was yeah. So have you gone bigger? Have you made it like really big? Oh yeah. So I think that's actually the map tile size. Like each each one of these like individual images that loads. Yeah. So I think I could do something like uh, with say 100 percent height, 100 percent take up the full browser. Okay. Refresh. This is actually the preferred solution if you're doing a map to make it 100% width and height because then when someone pulls up on mobile, it's the full uh, uh, screen so they don't, you don't have someone on mobile like trying to <laughs> pan all the kind of screen. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. So they actually suggest that you do this. Gotcha. Just, uh, it did say there was a limit of like 620 by 620 or something. Yeah, yeah. And then and then the it was like 2048. I think that was, that was yeah, individual yeah. tile size of the images is really? loading. I don't know, maybe 2048, I'm not even close to 2048 on this monitor, so maybe, yeah. That is, yeah. Especially not on the, uh, the screen. Right, oh yeah. <coughs> okay. So the next thing uh, I want to do is uh, add a marker. So mm -hmm. go to Google Maps and type in, a, yeah. say, restaurant, get a bunch of little markers. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's go ahead and uh, do that. And I should spell marker So again, google.map dot marker this time. We're going to pass in let's see, uh, a position, which is just a uh, lat long paragon. So google.maps dot lng. And I'll go ahead and uh, put it in the center of the map again. So And then we have to associate it uh, with the map object. So we put the map object uh, in this variable. So we're going to pass that in. So this, this marker will go on this map. And if we had multiple maps on screen, then you can uh, reuse marker instances across the map. <coughs> okay. 
Okay, and I, that should be all I need. So if I uh, refresh again, hey, we have a marker. So the next step, we have this marker, but I can't really do anything with it, right? So I just I click it, nothing happens. So uh, what's next that a lot of people want is when you click it, display some information about it, like say the address of the marker. Uh, so that's called the info window. And so same sort of way as we did uh, with the marker. We're going to make a new google.maps.info uh, window. And uh, we're going to say... It still blows my mind that that goes out to the west coast or wherever they have their servers in uh, Austria. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Oh, second. We have the yeah. right. So we have this uh, info window sitting here, and we want to actually say uh, when someone clicks the marker, then we want it to pop up. So we're going to say uh, Google dot maps dot event, and add a listener to the marker. So the marker is uh, what we defined uh, right up here. And then we're going to pass in some options. Actually, no. First, we're going to say on. Uh, Click when you click the marker, then call this function. Over instead. And so this function could do anything, right? So I could say make a alert do like this. Mm. Okay. Mm. Uh, but what we want to actually do is then display the info window. And we want to open on this map pointed at the marker that we clicked. Now we have a hello world. And uh, let's see, the last thing I want to do is so show a little bit about a geolocation, because typically when you're doing this, uh, you're going to have maybe like a input box, right? And you're, uh, like yeah, you said, right? You're going to have like a customer come in and want to input their address and then pop up on the map. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to do next. Uh, that's <coughs> I'm going to reorganize this code a little bit, uh, just so it's uh, more easy to do that. So uh, let's see. I'm just going to is we're going to use a geocoder for this. And uh, all we have to do is just say new google.maps.geocoder. This will uh, be able to take addresses and uh, return latitude and longitude uh, coordinates. So I'm going to have uh, like a little function here called uh, address on map. <coughs> it's going to uh, take an address. We can't oh, see you're off the screen. <coughs> we need to scroll up. There we go. Okay. Hey, well, just a quick aside. What the hell is that that you've got on the side? <laughs> What's the number of lines up yeah. or down from the current? Oh, yeah, so that's my line numbers, except it's uh, relative. <coughs> I want to go nine out. <laughs> except how did you make Vim do that? Oh, yeah. no, uh, set, ex uh, set relative number. Okay. Yeah, set, set relative number. All right. Yeah, Because it's, it's both interesting and distracting at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been staring at you. What other numbers? Vim. Vim. In here, I thought it was the depth of the nesting. <laughs> Ooh, I'd be bad at like 31 levels. Who cares? It's probably the kind of compiler still work. Hmm. Okay. Yes. So what I'm going to do here is uh, <laughs> make a little uh, form. There's something that we're getting at. You, you blurred. You used to be in. Two years now. How are we doing on time? Yeah, 20, 22 minutes. Okay. You don't have to worry about them shutting up the internet. I am. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, you have to worry about me shutting off the internet. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's still plugged into the the, the internet. Yeah. Here. Something tells me there's just like an extension cord in some room, so <laughs> they just yank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's what they plug their Mac into. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you were asking about the font that I'm using, it's just mono space. Yeah. Built into Ubuntu. Let's see Ubuntu. Is that the new one that they yeah. have? Yeah, it's the one it's that nice. they custom designed. Yeah. Mm. I like it. You're off the screen again. I'm just uh, making a little form here. We're going to have uh, the user uh, input their address. Okay. Okay, so there's just a bit of... And as an aside, you should learn about jQuery. Oh yeah, okay. yeah, I consider pulling that in. But the only thing I'd ever be doing, I'm actually going to do something about that later. But, uh, the only thing I'd be pulling it in for is to get document my ID so it go away. Oh, uh, you'd do your event handlers with it too. Yeah, but I have to use a Google, or I guess I have to use a Google Map event handlers here anyway. Right? So I guess it would do this. So the event on the map. Yeah, you have to use like Google's event bus for most of the events when you're doing that. Although I do have a cool JavaScript library I'm going to show after this, but it'll make it a lot easier. <coughs> okay. And, uh, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to call. Uh, We have to have some basic uh, JavaScript here just saying uh, we want to don't actually submit the form and instead call our uh, mark address on map. With uh, the value the user entered. So at this point uh, we're saying uh, when the user uh, clicks the submit button, uh, go grab the value of the input and pass it into our mark address on map. And so here we can start using uh, Google's geocoder stuff. So up here we have our uh, geocoder defined. And so we're going to say uh, geocoder on geocode. Uh, passing the address. Have you been doing enough of this where you just have it all in your head? <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you were really impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I should have just said yes. Yeah, I, just <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I am that good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Okay. So or, or just up, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what have been? So when we uh, call this a uh, geocode. <laughs> When we call this a uh, geocode, we pass in the address, and then we pass in a function to call once Google is done geocoding. Uh, call back. Yeah. yeah, it's basically just a callback function. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to pass back our results and then our status. And so we can just do something like uh, if status. So if we're good, then we're just going to make a new marker, like we did above. They have the moon, too. How many addresses are there on the moon? I'd like to figure out the latitude and longitude. Yeah. So you don't want to specify any imaginary numbers? 
Mark II Mark II plus height. Important to mention. If anyone knows how to get them to stop uh, the inventing this stuff. Oh yeah. Okay, so let's see, assuming I did all this right, which there's a high probability and this is something I'm always good. Oh, we actually have to enter our map down here. You're off the screen. Yeah. this uh, input up here and a submit button. And uh, I'll go ahead and enter in an address. Let's say just a random address on 12 mile road. Let's do that work. Pop up right there. Mm, nice. And so we can do something like uh, library. There, I think it's pretty liberal in like uh, what it allows you to do. I might even want to do something like this. Run some Detroit, Michigan. Yeah. Yes. And so I've, I've shown uh, a few of the uh, options here, just like the addition map, but there are so many options here. Just like whatever you want to do, whatever you want to override, how uh, you can do it. So I think uh, cool. one that's a little bit fun is something like uh, animation. So let's put in. Oh yeah, it's just uh, like marker, you just can clear it basically, yeah. Don't forget you need the comma, yeah, you got it. So you can have all sorts of custom styles. If like you say you want these little markers to be like the logo of whatever company you're doing client work for, you can just change anything you want. Mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. there's one last thing I want to touch on just yeah. really, really quickly. Is uh, That'd be cool. <laughs> so you can see this is kind of verbose, right? It's like uh, you have all these namespaces you specify, and it's not very JavaScripty, right? Mm -hmm. It's like uh, almost more Java -y than anything. And so uh, there is a cool project called, uh, I think it's a GMAPS.js. Hmm. This guy right here. I can jQuery for, J for Google Maps. Uh, so it's not actually dependent on jQuery, although if you have... Oh, it does like it. Uh, yeah, but it, it, is, it makes a lot more javascript -y. So you can see, like, uh, we have uh, this... Let me say... Uh, Uh, I'm actually opening a file. Okay, so I have uh, these two files right here. Uh, this is the file we just created uh, with all the verbos verbosity. And so you see this init maps function is uh, pretty large. Here it is with uh, gmaps.js, this guy right here. And so you basically Killer simple. You just like, yeah. add a marker, you specify an info window, it automatically assumes that you want the info window to show up when you click the map, mm -hmm. and it handles all that stuff for you. So nice. I definitely recommend if you're just doing some things or a high level like uh, one of these maps, you uh, check out gmap.js. Sweet. Mm -hmm. Cool. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's all I have. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you.